for the drums. Hey guys. Hey, hey Keith. Keith. Hey. So what I want to do today is continue with our mental models series. This is number six. Um, we've covered recently the definitions of what is data, uh, what is a dimension, what does it mean physically, like what happens when data is aggregated. What I'd like to do today is continue a little bit further along this path of granularity and aggregation um, and look at all of the different levels of detail that exist uh, simultaneously uh, when we're working in a canvas in Tableau. Um, and so thankfully from our previous mental models, number five and 5.1, we know now what is aggregation, like what happens in the system when data is aggregated. Um, and just to recap, data aggregation is really just the state of a, a granular data set being summarized. So aggregation, it reduces granularity. Um, and this is our first time looking at, at this particular diagram. We'll come back to it in a little bit more detail in future mental models. Basically what it's showing is that granularity and aggregation, they're kind of on opposite ends of a spectrum from each other. So if data is more granular, then it's less aggregated. And if data is more aggregated, then it's less granular. It's a little bit like a person, if they're more tall, then that means that they're less short. Um, and so uh, this particular diagram, we're gonna come back to it in the future when we look at what's going on with level of detail expressions in Tableau. Uh, but just to kind of cap it up here, data aggregation is really just any process in which detailed information is gathered together and expressed in a summary format. Um, and the main thing to take away from this diagram is that down in the bottom right, when you're more granular, eventually you're going to get to the bottom. You're going to get to the grain of the original data set. And this was one of our mental models, the first question to ask. What is the grain of that original data that I'm connecting to? Because once you get down there, that's as deep as you can go. The data is totally disaggregated and you can't go any deeper than that. So just to kind of sum it up, data aggregation is any process. It could be taking a sum or an average or a variance or a covariance or a standard deviation or a median or a max or a minimum. There's all of these different ways that we can summarize data and all of that is doing is just aggregating the data to express it down into a single summary statistic, taking what was once a bunch of records and turning them into just one single summary value. Um, and we started off the mental models episode with this sort of simplistic diagram that illustrates what is the Tableau query process. Um, and what I'd like to do today is bring these things together because when I introduced this diagram to you, Jonathan, you said all models are useful, but, but you know, they're wrong as well. Mm -hmm. And so this particular diagram is a dramatic oversimplification. And so I flashed up onto the screen in one of our earlier mental models, the manner in which in that one diagram, uh, at least I can count them, there's eight, probably nine, 10, because I'm sure I don't have them all present here, differing levels of detail that can simultaneously exist um, inside of this one Tableau query process while we're working on the canvas. So Keith, it already looks like you've started with a very summary level model, and now we're getting into the details. Yep. Same way we so would way with lives. data investigation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what do you think? Will you accompany me on this journey to just kind of take a look at these things and unpack these differing levels of detail one at a time? Yeah, let's dive let's in. Let's do it. Okay, so first, number one down in the bottom right-hand corner is the grain of the original data set. That's the first question to ask. Anytime you sit down with a new data set, you need to understand, I have one new record in this granular data set for what, right? And so then from there, it would stand to reason that each of these additional levels of detail, we are possibly at some stage kind of summarizing that data up a little bit further. Mm -hmm. um, next level of detail I have here is the grain of each logical table. Uh, and of course, 
you know, in that first question to ask that original data set, it could be the case that we're connecting to more than one granularity, right? I could have a certain data set uh, coming from one location, a different data set coming from another, and those two could be at differing grains or differing levels of detail. And I'm gonna bring them together in my Tableau uh, data model, um, possibly, probably with a logical relationship between them. And so in that Tableau data model, each logical table is going to be at its own differing level of detail or differing granularity. Yeah, here there could be, I think of this as kind of like, <clears throat> to some degree, what is it Tableau, what is Tableau working with? Is this logical table view that's encapsulating all of our, the physical joins, the pre, the initial SQL, custom SQL. Um, if we're using the analytics extensions, in building out our data set and so on, there's there's something that Tableau has created there for us if we're we're doing more than just connecting to a single table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the way that you've said that. Is that logical table, Jonathan, is going to encapsulate all of those things? And I tend to just be a fairly simple person in in terms of SQL, and so I don't use a lot of initial SQL. I don't use a lot of custom SQL. I just tend to be a no-code kind of person, and I'll, I'll use the, the visual interface that Tableau gives me to do left joins and right joins and inner joins. Um, and so I tend to think of that uh, logical table as just being the result of the joins that I make, but mm -hmm. you're absolutely correct. There, there's more to it. There's any initial SQL mm -hmm. that I wrote. Uh, there's any custom SQL that I wrote. Um, any extra stuff that's going in there, it's all encapsulated into the grain of the, the finished product of each logical table. Mm -hmm. And then those multiple logical yeah. tables can be at different granularities um, and those are bridged by across a relationship. Yeah. Okay, and so then from there, working our way up, now we're gonna be dragging and dropping pills on the canvas and arranging the specification of, of the view on the canvas and Tableau's VizQL is gonna author a query or multiple queries for us based on the arrangement of our dimensions and measures and, and pills on the canvas. Um, and so then we're gonna have the grain of the actual query that's run against those logical tables. Yep, and that's where we have our, our series on relationships talks about how those queries can change based on the dimensions and measures we're using. Exactly, and I think it's so important for People who are used to writing SQL and handling joins um, and the cross product of database tables to understand the difference between a join and a Tableau relationship. Here we can deal with multiple granularities in the relationship model. And I'd really encourage people to go back to that episode that really dives deep into that because it it's hard to wrap your mind around if you're so used to understanding database joins in, in a SQL context here, we can talk about having multiple granularities and how they interact with each other. Yeah, and, and one of the things that's been most useful to me, and it's a reason why this podcast exists, is so we could share these conversations with the rest of the world, is actually talking to Jonathan in this conversational format. He's really helped me to understand the manner in which the grain of the query that's going across the relationship is not necessarily the same as the grain of the relationship itself. Mm. And that the more that we can understand what's happening at each of these nuanced levels, when you understand how something works, then you can work with it. Okay, and so then from there, we're gonna get this aggregated local cache of query results. And so the arrangement of pills on the canvas is gonna determine the query that goes to the view, specifically the dimensions we've discussed are gonna send a group by uh, in that SQL, and the measures are gonna to aggregate to the level of detail of the dimensions in the view. And ultimately, that query that goes across those relationships is gonna come back with a set of results. And then that set of query results can be cached, and there's no reason to query the, the underlying data set again unless the dimensions or the measures are changed. From there, we're just rearranging pills in order to, to make the viz. Um, and so this local cache of query results itself can be at a differing level of detail than either of the things that we've discussed above. Mm -hmm. yep. And just to add to the kind of like where we see the query results in Tableau is when we right click on a mark or on the whole viz and do a view data. 
Mm-hmm. And that summary window that comes up is those query results. Yeah. Which is which is distinct and different from saying view all mm-hmm. underlying records, right? So when you say, yes. when you right click on a mark and you say view data, the first thing it's gonna give you is that summary view. And that summary view mm-hmm. is the tabular layout of this local cache of query results. Okay, so now finally we're working with marks on the canvas, right? Like, so now we've got our query results. They've come back from the data source. Um, and this is what uh, we affectionately refer to as the viz level of detail. This is the level of detail, the granularity of mm-hmm. the specific canvas that we're working on. Um, and Jonathan and I have done a lot in uh, the first season when we were talking about episodes, uh, talking about relationships. Uh, We had various episodes where we looked at how the viz level of detail is actually unique to each marks card. And so I can have Mm -hmm. multiple marks cards on the same canvas, each with their unique level of detail. But nevertheless, we refer to this uh, grain as the level of detail of the specific canvas that we're working on, or more precisely, the level of detail of the marks card within the canvas that we're working on. Well, yeah, so if we have layer and another one here with marks cards, it's not just like multiple green or continuous pills on rows and columns creating multiple marks cards. We also have map layers now that are giving us multiple marks cards. So if we have that map with state or province at one level and city at the next level, that's two different levels of detail. Yeah, and so just to get our kind of vernacular straight, Mm-hmm. We're, we're old school kind of dinosaurs. It didn't used to be the case that, that you had all of these differing moving parts. And, and we tend to still use this language viz level of detail. Uh, but really more precisely, it's the level of detail marks card by marks card. But nevertheless, we use this exactly. language that we, we call it the viz mm-hmm. level of detail. Yeah. And, and I appreciate you pointing that out, Keith, because sometimes, in fact, often, the level of detail is not necessarily visible uh, in what you see on the canvas. There can be marks overlapping. There can be levels of detail um, that are sort of there on the canvas, but not exactly uh, visible um, in in a in a marks sort of way. Um, so yes talking about it in in terms of the canvas and the marks card, much more accurate. Yeah, like I've been helping a bunch of people with maps, and that's the whole thing with maps is that you may put something on detail, so it's from Tableau's computation standpoint, it is part of that level of detail, but if it's a field that can't be mapped, for example, then it's not being displayed for you. And I would say this is one of the most important things that, that you know, practitioners in Tableau don't necessarily understand is this concept of the viz level of detail. Um, and exactly like you've mentioned, it's not necessarily in your face or visible from the marks on the screen that, that the level of detail of the canvas or the level of detail mm-hmm. of the marks card that I'm working in is, is of a certain kind of grain uh, because what I'm seeing is not the same thing as as the grain of the viz level of detail or the canvas LOD itself. Um, and just being able to discern and distinguish between what I'm seeing and what is actually the viz level of detail um, is super important. So much so that we'll come yeah. back soon and there's a whole mental model dedicated to just this. Um, and also one of the things that Jonathan and I talk about a lot is the difference between sort of ad hoc um, inquisitive mode and engineering mode. And so once I've kind of gotten through my exploratory analysis, I might then wanna switch into more of an engineering mindset and actually be very specific about the the construction of a very specific data visualization for performance, for efficacy, uh, in order to accomplish what I want. And when I get into that engineering mode, that's when understanding the viz LOD becomes more and more important. Yeah, I know this is one of those places where kind of in the Tableau is different from other tools in a way is that very often like if we're in Excel, we're creating a data set and then it's ending up, we're we're tending to do all of that aggregation and summarization of the data and then we build a chart on that. 
and Tableau coming out of this exploratory visual analytics of the data is making it so we're dragging and dropping things on the canvas and moving them around dynamically and being able to rearrange chart types really quickly or they're automatically set up. And so it's not making that, what is that data set that we're using to draw the marks on the canvas so obvious? It's, it's abstracted that to some way in order to speed up this iterative analysis. Totally, and that's a, that's a major benefit of working in Tableau actually is that mm -hmm. rapid visual analytics and keeping me in yeah. the flow so that I can just drag and drop pills on the canvas and be in more of a visual um, uh, workspace in, in my brain and the way that that's functioning. And yet one of the trade-offs that occurs with that design of the product is that the actual granularity of the tabular viz LOD is, is absconded from us a little bit and, and it's, and it's um, out mm -hmm. of view. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got this viz LOD and we're uh, from there then able to work with that and yet other levels of detail, right? Because um, prior to version 10 or 11 or 20 something something dot something Nine. when the LOD expressions were released, there used to be this really painful point in a Tableau practitioner's life where the only LOD that you had was the viz LOD. And then came out these wonderful things called level of detail expressions mm -hmm. that allowed for us to begin from the viz LOD and then either include extra dimensions or exclude certain dimensions or just fix a calculation at some other LOD that's not the viz level of detail, that's not the canvas grain, and just run one calculation at that other alternative level of detail. And that then here is, is what I'm referring to as the grain of the computation because I may want to fix a level of detail expression or just begin from the viz LOD and include something else. Um, and so we can have other computation with these level of detail expressions that are just running at some other granularity that's not the grain of the canvas. And I'll, I'll add one point here, is that level of detail expressions, if you've got this one big flat table that some dimensions, some measures might be at a different grain, but they've sort of been mashed together, that's where level of detail expressions are really great and really necessary. With the Tableau relationships model, if we've got multiple logical tables at different granularities, we don't necessarily need that level of detail calculation. So it really has to point back to what is that underlying data model? Are you using relationships and logical tables at different grains? Or are you meshing different grains in a single flat table? Um, all of those things go into consideration. Which, which really to me illustrates the importance of Jonathan's upcoming series. Um, and even you're gonna to begin to converge on it with your everyday KPIs, Robert. All, it all is leading back to the analytical data model itself. Right, like mm -hmm. the model of those logical mm -hmm. tables, the arrangement of the joins and the relationships, um, and how can we structure the analytical data model so that it is suitable and um, um, kind of enables the analysis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll get into all those things in the future. At the moment, we're just scaffolding up one step at a time, granularity and aggregation. So now we've got this viz LOD, we can run some LOD expressions at differing levels of detail. From there, that entire canvas, it's at an aggregate level, right? And so we've, we've got the grain of the canvas, we've got aggregation that has happened to that level of detail. Even the LOD expressions themselves are gonna ultimately resolve to the viz LOD, even while that computation runs at some other level of detail. So from that viz LOD, we've got aggregate values that are at that level of detail of the canvas or the marks card. From there, we can do further aggregation using table calculations. And so table calculations are gonna take those aggregate values and then further summarize them into like a percent of total or a running sum or, or a window average, right? So, so now I've got this yet another level of detail that's attainable to me because I can take those aggregate values that are at the viz LOD and then further summarize them one or two or three steps beyond with table calculations. And it's really, um, it's sort of not just one, two, three steps beyond, it's n steps beyond because we can mm -hmm. nest table calculations. And yeah. so 
though they're all still based on that viz, that viz level of detail, that aggregated set of results, when we start nesting them, they can start um, working with the data in different ways and, and effectively create new levels of detail. Yeah, I can see how someone hearing this and, and trying to wrap their minds around it might think that we're playing three-dimensional chess or actually something even more complicated than that. And to that, I would say the way that we can simplify this is by breaking out the individual pieces, uh, duplicate a sheet as cross tabs and, and look at the grain and the calculations that are happening each step along the way to make sure that it, it makes sense because we can have these multi-level things going on. And it's important to be able to have some visibility on those multiple levels just to check the process. Mm -hmm. And I also, to, I really like that point, Robert. And I, the other piece I would add to it is um, there's many ways to work with Tableau. And that I've I've worked with people who've used Tableau for years who have never done a table calculation, mm -hmm. for example. They've been completely functional in their job and able to get done what they needed to. Mm -hmm. um, or people who, on the other end of the spectrum, have never really done a join because they've always been given a data source yeah. that's been able to meet their needs. So it's... Um, so this, so this is a way I see we're doing this really deep dive and revealing some of the, the potential complexity of what we can do in Tableau, um, but also its capability. Yep, and a big part of that capability mm -hmm. is enabling different skill sets to work in, in their area where they feel comfortable and not necessarily need to even be aware that all of this stuff is going on under the mm -hmm. hood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, thank you for that, Tableau. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing before we go on, I love the way that you mentioned, Jonathan, that these table calculations can go on and on and on and on and on. Um, Noah Salvatera did uh, an experiment where he got to, I don't remember how many, but 60... It was 128 at the time. Uh, it was 128 levels of, mm -hmm. of further aggregation that you could do with the <laughs> table calculations. And this, mm -hmm. to me... Wow. It, if there was a wow. if there was a feature request to Tableau, it would be to to build out the user interface to allow for us to work with those out, uh, table calculations with with more of a, a with less of a kludgy user interface because there's so much potential there with those. Oh uh, wow! Uh, my my continued ask for Tableau is to make the like if anybody from Tableau development is watching, my continued ask is to make all of this more obvious. Mm. Because yeah. and it also goes to what Robert was talking about earlier with people who are coming from SQL, which is a lot of Tableau users. And I'll, I'll still get people asking me, like, what is the SQL for this view? Mm -hmm. And there's all these aggregations and things that can go on in Tableau's caching data to make it really fast for us and so on that there is no simple SQL, but there could be things to make it easier. And and this is a place where I think it's unfortunate that we do have to live with a certain amount of complexity and videos like this one to explain more of what's going on in Tableau that hopefully in the future will be easier for people to unpack from the interface. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all buried down there in the monolith. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're not done yet. Uh, I've got one more here. I know I've identified others that are not on this screen, but the mm -hmm. last one that we've got for today is the granularity of the totals and the grand totals. And this yeah. then speaks to, to Jonathan, your active series that's underway now, mm -hmm. where you're walking us through multiple, multiple episodes about how to do uh, totals and grand totals and how to understand them and be effective with them. Main takeaway here is that those totals and grand totals are yet another level of detail uh, that, can, that can we, we can work with on this one canvas. And going back to the, the where we started in this video with aggregation, totals are really aggregating, re-aggregating the data in the visualization to generate that total amount. Yeah. And in that, that's a new summarization at a different level of detail. That's, that's how it fits. I'd also add to this very quickly, besides totals and grand totals, things like reference lines, 
mm -hmm. forecasting, um, are all these additional aggregations based on the data and the visualization yeah. that we can do in Tableau. We, we also identified another one that happens way down in the relationship calculations recently. So there's more to add. These are the ones that we have mm -hmm. here today. Um, and uh, suffice it to say, there's a lot going on here in Tableau. And I'm really hopeful that just by taking these 20 minutes to sort of lay them out and fillet them out and look at them one at a time, we can really help other practitioners to join us uh, down here in this world where when you know how things work, you can work with them so that others can uh, begin to take advantage of all of these things and get into more of that engineering mode. Uh, because when you know the controls uh, and when you know what's happening at each step of the way, like Robert said, just verify your results one step at a time, then uh, you can really make magical things happen. So to kind of begin to wrap it up, I'd like to end with honoring Noah. We mentioned him earlier with his work on the table calculations. Uh, this was a quote that I took from him from one of his Tableau conference talks. He was up on the stage. Uh, and in Noah's kind of bravado way, he just kind of said it so bluntly, right? We're like, when you're working in Tableau, let's just be honest, the grain is always in your face. You just need to be yeah. always constantly aware of what's the grain yeah. of what I'm working with. Okay. And so why is this so important? Well, it's because uh, reality has a surprising amount of detail. <laughs> and uh, as sense makers, we're constantly uh, synthesizing this reality for the benefit of others to make that surprising amount of detail easy for others to see and understand. And so understanding this uh, levels of granularity and the manners in which we can work with it in Tableau is just really part and parcel to um, interacting with this complex world around us and then using Tableau to help explain it to others around us. Yeah. And so um, finally, just to wrap it up here with one of my Zen cones, um, granularity and aggregation are opposite on a spectrum. Together, they bring clarity, helping us to dissect and then some. That's great. Yep. Okay. Well, thanks guys for joining mm -hmm. me on this. And um, we'll see you next time as we continue down this road to uh, unpack these mental models. All right. Thanks, um, Keith. Thanks, Keith. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Action